this topic uh, is av also available in the online lecture, but maybe partly. So upon request, upon request, uh, I will cover this topic. And um, so basically, we are looking uh, the, the what happens during during frying, eh? deep fat frying. Because as we know, one of the big application of uh, fat and oil is for frying, especially uh, in uh, fast food. Yeah, we use a lot of deep, deep frying. So um, I'm sure also all of you have experienced yourself when you fry food with oil. Yeah, some have bad experience. Some have good experience, but um, usually what we what we observe uh, when we fry food using oil, the oil is very hot. We have to increase the temperature to well above 100 or even 200 uh, degree Celsius. So it's very very hot. Then uh, you put in the food, whatever that you want to fry, it can be chicken, can be anything, but uh, always, most of the time, or even all the time, the, con the food will contain uh, water, moisture. It can be, you know, uh, very wet, so the, the water content is very high. And when the wet food containing water come in contact with hot water, so that is when you see that reaction, uh, you know, the, like a boiling reaction. So basically, the water uh, con containing the food just flash off, yeah, uh, because the temperature the temperature is well above 100 degrees Celsius. So the water in the food would uh, vaporize, flash off, and actually trying to escape from inside the oil into the atmospheric, into the atmosphere. So that's why you see the vigorous boiling reaction yeah and sometimes you get something also like uh, blah, blah, splash off yeah? from, from the food uh, can get to your hand even to your face if you're not careful <laughs> I remember when my daughter you know learned how to fry food you know and she's not the, the type who like to go into the kitchen and you know cook you know uh, some of you maybe also. <laughs> so when she learned to like to fry the the apa ni, fish, yeah? like eh, 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 uh. <laughs> so maybe some of you have experienced that. But have you ever imagined the kind of reaction, the physical and chemical, physical and chemical reaction that occur in the food, uh, in in the yeah in the food as well as in the oil during frying. There are many type of reaction here. So we actually can talk about the hydrolysis of fat of the triglycerides. We can talk about the oxidation of fat and other components in the food. Oxidation of the fat in the food as well as, as, well as oxidation of the fat in the oil itself to produce uh, various types of oxidized uh, products. It can, be it can be good, can be bad. Good because it will oxidize the fat the oil itself uh, good because some of, of the oxidation product themselves can actually add to the to the to the flavor to the characteristic flavor of the food yeah uh, so there is a good and bad uh, side of the oxidation so we can get oxidation we can get hydrolysis and uh, other kind of reaction that in the end will produce a range of uh, a compound yeah some of this will go into the food itself that would contribute the flavor. Some will go into the oil. Okay. Um, so imagine now uh, the yellow color is the oil, and above that is the atmosphere. Okay. So now we are looking at changes during deep fat frying. I think it's good also to cover this in the lecture, lah, because this also this is very very important part of uh, the the application of fat or oil in Malaysia at least 
who knows maybe you will go for interview for KFC or McDonald or any industry that that uh, involved in uh, this kind of business where they do a lot of deep fat frying and they will ask you you know uh, about something like this so maybe at least we have some ideas so we have the food so imagine the food always contain water and other things so it will come in contact with the hot oil imagine this oil is very hot very very hot okay so we, where to start let's look at what happened to the water in the food it will just vaporize in a split second it's so fast so fast yeah so the moment the moment the food come in contact with the oil we just see that vigorous boiling reaction which actually the steam the water actually forms steam and where the steam goes it has to go out somewhere you want to go out to the atmosphere so the steam will form that uh, boiling reaction which is the bubble and it will vaporize goes off so we get a steam from the water but remember the food also contain uh, protein and carbohydrates fats and some other volatile whatever flavor they have so these are volatiles and these volatiles also will escape together with the steam okay um, so we have vaporization then um, the fat itself when come in contact with with water <coughs> under very high temperature it will hydrolyze so we have the hydrolysis of triglycerides now in the oil of course when the starch sorry when the fat hydrolyzes it will produce the ffa <coughs> the free fatty acid will produce uh, if the if the triglyceride is partially hydrolyzed it will form a mixture of diglycerides maybe even monoglycerides and maybe even glycerol itself glycerin yeah so it can be a mixture of this as a result of the hydrolysis of the triglycerides under the influence of water and high temperature of the cooking oil at the same time the the vigorous boiling reaction during to the escaping of steam to the to the atmosphere <coughs> will draw in draw in or pull in air from the atmosphere so in air of course it contains oxygen and even in in the food and in the oil itself contains some dissolved oxygen and now it pull in the air and pull in the oxygen from the air in, into the oil come in contact with the with the triglycerides the unsaturated bond in the triglycerides <coughs> will be oxidized so we have oxidation there okay we have oxidation of course you learn you have learned probably about oxidation what happens during oxidation so it will go through the primary oxidation and perhaps secondary oxidation it will produce a range of uh, peroxide hydroperoxides these are the primary products of the oxidation <coughs> um, and will produce uh, some other products from this through fusion process and so on to produce uh, aldehydes, acids and hydrocarbons so these are the compounds that uh, uh, can be produced as a result of oxidation and the presence of this compound at high temperature can promote other type of chemical reaction can start another type of chemical reaction which is polymerization of this to form a bigger compound so another reaction that can occur during frying in in oil is actually polymerization 
yeah? this polymerization from the small compound that form from the hydrolysis, sorry, from the oxidation. So under the influence of high temperature, it can produce bigger compounds. So we have here is actually polymerization reaction. As, as we uh, continue, or if the frying is, is prolonged, yeah, more and more, more and more oxidation, more and more this product will be formed, and more and more of polymerized compound will be formed. Polymeric, polymeric compound by nature has a high molecular weight, and it will actually contribute to the viscosity. It will increase the viscosity of the oil. Yeah, it will increase the viscosity of the oil. So, uh, one of the physical changes that can occur, oxidation is chemical changes. This uh, steam uh, vaporized, go out to the atmosphere, that is physical changes. Polymerization, that is chemical changes. As the effect, uh, the effect of uh, polymerization is the increase in viscosity, that is physical changes. So that's why earlier I said during the fat frying, we have chemical and physical changes. So as a result of polymer the formation of the polymeric compound, it will increase the viscosity of the oil. If we measure the viscosity, the viscosity would increase. The effect of increasing viscosity during frying would be also uh, to affect how easy the steam that is formed to escape to the atmosphere. Imagine we have fresh oil and we have used uh, and compare with oil that we have used for frying maybe five times. Yeah. So the viscosity of fresh oil A and five times uh, oil uh, you have used five times, the viscosity, let's say this B, is higher. So the, the steam that is formed here will have more difficult time to escape to the atmosphere because the viscosity is higher. So if you have observed how the, how the boiling of the fresh oil compared to the oil that has been used a few times, you will see that the oil that has been used a few times will have a more like, like how to say, like more violent kind of uh, boiling, you know, it's kind of, you can also hear the sound like is is also lebih apa bising lebih you know I cannot apa tu imitate that yeah but it will increase the viscosity of the oil. Another effect of increasing the viscosity of the oil together with the increase in free fatty acid in the oil due to the hydrolysis is it will cause the oil to form smoke, more smoke. So when you fry, we, when you fry using fresh oil, you hardly can see any smoke. Yeah? But if you use the oil a few times, baru guna saja, baru fry saja, you can see more oil, eh, more oil, more smoke form. Yeah? So the effect of when more fatty acid is formed, and this fatty acid, some actually would be, uh, will go out from the oil because it's volatile, but some will remain, and some will form actually other compound, yeah? and the overall effect of this is actually to reduce the smoke point, reduce the smoke point of the oil. Smoke point is the temperature when the oil start to form smoke. You learn in probably IMG203 or IMG204. 
uh, IMG, should be in IMG 203. Or maybe in food chemistry, I don't know. You learn about the properties of me. Yeah. So smoke point, when we, if uh, some of the analysis that we do on fat and oil is smoke point. That is to show the stability of the oil and the quality of the oil. Poor quality, uh, actually, uh, if you buy those oil in the packet, is you know, the Clack Dye, Rostron, and so on, they use this type of oil, sold in the packet or sold in the big can. Those are probably um, the lower grade, lower grade oil. Yeah, the lower grade oil. And in terms of refining, maybe, you know, the, in terms of the fatty acid content is maybe higher. Those oil would have a lower smoke point compared to the premium oil that we buy in the supermarket. Meaning that uh, it can form smoke easily. Maybe uh, um, high quality oil, maybe if you use three, four times, still okay. Not, I know you don't see smoke form easily. But the low, quali the low grade, not say low quality, lah, low grade oil, uh, after you use maybe twice, you, know, you can see smoke form easier and more. Yeah? So that is due to the formation of the free fatty acid and also the polymeric compound that is formed uh, in the oil during cooking. And remember, this, all this compound that is formed uh, actually would accumulate in the oil would accumulate in the oil. If you don't remove them and you use the oil again, second time, third time, more and more would accumulate in the oil. Yeah? Have you, um, let's say you, you buy any fried food yang gerai-gerai di tepi jalan kan? Especially goreng pisang. Saya baru nak cakap contoh goreng pisang. Yeah? Some of them use the oil many, many, many times. Yeah? Without, maybe they just filter the crack, apa ni, benda-benda tu yang, apa, dia punya crumbs, apa, residue, apa semua tu. Tapi, uh, the, the, they just remove the solid residue, but not the soluble residue in the oil. So when they fry the, uh, the, the, the apa ni, pisang to using that oil, uh, sometimes it doesn't taste good at all. Yeah. Um, in a big uh, uh, like those McDonald, KFC, and so on, they also recycle the oil. Do you think they use fresh oil every time? Uh, who have gone to industrial training in KFC or McDonald? <laughs> so kita minta Alifa dengan who? Uh, Apa? Shah? Shah Fizan. Shah Fizan, ah, Shah Fizan. So maybe you can share your experience. Macam mana dia orang recycle dia orang punya oil? They mix, okay. They mix, but they have done. They have not. They don't do any kind of treatment. Ah, the you don't see it. You don't see it, yeah. Uh, yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, yeah. This treat. What this treatment does is actually to remove the soluble. Those compound that accumulate in the oil. This small compound, they remove them. Uh, not only uh, the insoluble ins, ins residue, but also this soluble compound in the oil, so that they can, uh, this oil, actually properly done, if it's, the process is properly done, the good is, the, the oil is quite, uh, well, the, in terms of quality, yeah, almost like, almost like near, near fresh. But they mix with the fresh oil. So uh, that's how they maximize because oil is expensive. Yeah? That's how they maximize. Yeah? Um, what is one of the major concern nowadays? If you follow the what's 
latest in the food, food technology, is the issue of acrylamide. Pernah dengar? Acry, acrylamide. A C R Y L A M I D E. Acry, lamide. Ada yang pernah dengar dalam newspaper, dalam um, if you read, if you follow what's happening in the world of food technology, if you are good for food technologies, if not, then you are still good. <laughs> so you should know this is the latest issue on food safety. A group of scientists from, uh, if I'm mistaken, from Sweden, they discovered, not, not, not so recently, maybe a few years ago, but okay, still recent, a few years ago, they discovered that um, food containing uh, carbohydrates and also fat, when heated at high temperature, they can produce this so-called acrylamide. And do you know what is acrylamide? Acrylamide is a monomer, is a monomer that can form a bigger polymer called poly acrylamide. Polyacrylamide is synthetic gel. Yeah, synthetic gel we use in electrophoresis, we use in many non-food application. Yeah. We form gel, very nice clear gel. I remember in my final year project I used polyacrylamide to to prepare the electrophoresis uh, gel. Yeah. Polyacrylamide is not dangerous at all but of course you don't eat don't eat but but basically it's safe to hold to touch but before it form gel in the monomer form acrylamide is carcinogenic i remember i read the label don't inhale make sure you know you don't get uh, you don't uh, get uh, your, i mean the, the acrylamide don't uh, get into the uh, you, you know uh, contact with the skin and so on because it's carcinogenic carcinogen you know so they discovered this scientist discovered that during frying and uh, even uh, baking toasting uh, roasting acrylamide can form so it actually cause uh, an alarm a yeah, big issue around the world FDA, Food Drug and Administration, USA, investigated this. So, luckily, luckily they found, actually they confirmed, yes, acrylamide actually formed from various reactions. Somehow, it's a complex reaction, even the mechanism is not well understood yet. How the acrylamide formed during frying, during high temperature baking, roasting, yeah? Um, they believe the myelite reaction is probably also responsible from the myelite reaction through some other complex pathway and mechanism can form acrylamide. And it has been confirmed that acrylamide can form. But the good news is the normal level acrylamide formed during frying and other high temperature process it is not uh, dangerous <coughs> for the body, for our body system. And it can be uh, probably uh, removed through you know, uh, the various ways. But um, there is um, a very small amount. Uh, I think there's still research now around the world at what level when the acrylamide and how much food that you eat, for example, like fried food, until you reach that level where the acrylamide accumulate above certain level in your body and can cause harm. It can start the 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 can you become can you know get the can cause cancer and and so on. So the the lesson from this the or the the, the Message, the message from this, um, maybe if you want to eat fried food or anything like roasted, toasted, whatever, baked, we eat in moderation. Yeah? Like Shen, she just eat veg, veg, veggie. 
<laughs> huh? You don't fry. Yeah? You fry also. Occasionally. Yeah, occasionally. Yeah. Otherwise you boil. Yeah. But so it's not a dirty yeah. oil but it's still fried. Yeah. But you can still eat fried food but in moderation. Moderate, yeah? That's the rule of thumb. Eat in moderation. Okay? Everything is in moderation. So that's what happens during frying. Um, if, we, if, we, if we follow the chemical reaction, and um, so you can see here, uh, this, this, this uh, dash line shows the formation of the peroxides, the amount of oxygen in the oil, then the oxygen absorbed. So you can see the oxygen absorbed is increased, always uh, increased. And you can see this is the various type of chemical reaction that can uh, happen during deep fat frying. At the same time, the viscosity as a function of time increase quite dramatically. Yeah? So combination of the physical as well as the physical changes bring about um, some uh, desirable as well as undesirable effect on the food that is being fried. Eh? Ah, this is what Shen asked me to explain. I don't know whether I can explain. <coughs> so, you have this slide, right? The changes happen during, during uh, frying. So, you just uh, review that. Ah, rate of oxidation increase with temperature, oxygen, and presence of light and contact with pro-oxidant. <coughs> Especially if you have copper. So, if you fry in stainless steel uh, con uh, 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 fryer or container, uh, then you don't get this pro pro metal as a pro-oxidant. Yeah? Well, imagine if you fry in a copper container, copper pot, you get copper to leach out into the oil and increase the oxidation. Yeah? Polymerization form a larger molecule and it's costly increase. This is what I have explained. Decompose to form the volatile and non-volatile decomposition products. The volatile, so during the cooking, uh, the frying just now, we form the uh, range of compounds, some are volatile. So this will escape from the oil. Some are non-volatile, NVP. This will remain in the oil. So this can be removed you know, uh, by filtration maybe, and by using other ways. The VDP are constantly being removed by the evolving steam, but the NVDP remain in the oil, removed via absorption by the food, or by deposition of the frying kettle, but or by filtration. So as we use the oil more and more, the oil get darkened because the protein from the food, you know, um, breadings and what 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 and what not that we use, so we get the uh, browning reaction. So it causes increase in darkening. So to so to reduce uh, oxidation, most oil. In the market now, they use, they add antioxidant, synthetic antioxidant, BHA, BHT. Very, very strong, powerful, effective antioxidant. Okay? Um, ah, yeah. The more you use the oil, the easier the oil to smoke. 
and also to form foam. Bui. Yeah. So again, in the industry, sometimes they use uh, they add the anti foaming, yeah, to reduce the the foaming. So um, replacement with fresh oil or mix with fresh oil, if you want to to recycle the oil. You know, and this is an, an interesting uh, graph to show the FFA development during the prime. Remember, free, F, uh, free, uh, free fatty acid form due to the hydrolysis of the triglycerides in contact with water and high temperature. So we can plot free fatty acid on the x axis here and say during the prolonged frying, so it's a function of frying time. And we are, we are frying potato, fresh potato, to produce that maybe potato chips, yeah? potato fingers, potato wedges. Okay. Huh? <laughs> So we can see we have three situations here, high potato rate, low potato rate, and zero rate. Uh, what it means here is actually uh, refers to the amount of or loading, the load, the amount of potato that is being fried here. Okay. So we can see at high potato rate, we get more free fatty acid to form as a function of time. But low potato rate, we have less. And zero rate means just the oil without the potato. But still, we still get the free fatty acid to form and increase as a function of time. Only that it is lower than the low potato rate and much lower than high potato rate. So here in the presence of potato, of course, we can understand the water, the, the potato contain water, right? More potato, more water will be released, come in, into contact with the oil, form free fatty acid. Less potato, less water, less free fatty acid. Zero rate, no potato. Why? We still have free fatty acid. Hmm? Why we still have free fatty acid form? Oxidation. We are measuring fatty acid here. We are plotting fatty acid here. Huh? No. Well, we cannot avoid the oil still get hydrolyzed because of one high temperature. Any oil, yeah, any oil at high temperature, it will get hydrolyzed. Yeah, in the oil, in the cooking oil, do you think there is no water? There's still some water. During cooking, uh, during cooking, during frying, the oil is exposed to the atmospheric. In Malaysia, especially, the RH is high, and you still get some moisture in the atmosphere that can come in contact with the with the oil, and also cause some hydrolysis, especially at high temperature. Okay, so you still get some FFA, but uh, the production of FFA will be accelerated in the presence of food, especially food containing high amount of water. So, Uh, 
what we measure here is free fatty acid. Now, the same thing, but we measure the formation of foam. Uh, this is what Shen is, is uh, puzzled because she, she could not explain. In this case, foam height compared to this one, high potato here, low potato, zero rate. That is to be expected. That is to be expected. But when we measure the foam height, it's, it's the other way around. Low potato, zero rate here, and high potato is like this. Who can explain this? Those who, who have who got, who have got the notes from their senior, maybe the senior have written down something. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, if you can, if you, if you can explain in your own words from your own understanding. Who want to try? Who want to try? Huh? The potato absorb the polymer. Therefore, what happens to the foam height? Absorb the polymer and therefore reduce the uh, viscosity and absorb some of the uh, free fatty acid. <laughs> possible, possible. We do not know what really happened inside the oil, right? <laughs> so anything is possible. Okay. As, Shen kata, because the oil, the potato absorbs some of the polymeric compound that is formed and maybe even some of the free fatty acid, uh, therefore reduce the formation of foam. Could be partly true maybe. I'm waiting for someone to try to explain. Peghun, this time I want answer, not question. <laughs> I have explained. Oh yeah. I have explained in the video. Tapi Shan kata tak ada. So so how do how how did I explain? Hmm. Uh, I think that is correct. But can you say it again in uh, I mean louder, so that everyone can hear and can be captured on the camera? <laughs> hey, this one will go on the internet, you know, one day. <laughs> so all of you actually, when when uh, I don't know, it will happen sometime next year after they have edited the video, because we are not going to put the 50 minutes lecture on the internet. Probably you want to make it into half an hour or less. So Peg Hoon, your chance now. Ah, uh, no, no. Oh, Peg. Ah, ah, ah. Ayin, Ayin, yeah, Ayin. Yeah, exactly. Um, in the previous. No, after this. Here, during the hydrolysis of fat in the oil, FFA can form, and the the we can also form diglycerides and monoglycerides depending on the extent of the hydrolysis of the triglycerides, and we know very well the diglycerides and monoglycerides at certain. Uh, Amount concentration, uh, we learned this in IMK 209, can serve as an anti forming agent. So the form that is the form that is formed can be sort of broken down by the diglyceride and monoglyceride that is formed in the system. This uh, is a, this is a dynamic process.